Let's hear what the Republicans have to say about this. Only debuting her economic platform in a few hours. It's got new tax credits, costly support, costly support for first time home buyers, and a federal ban on, quote, price gouging. Harris specifically calls out grocery stores taking advantage of Americans. But look at this retailers reporting profit margins at 1.6%. Dude, this is fing insane. Sometimes you hear, but grocery is a low margin business. And I think the correct thing to say is it was a low margin business until the pandemic. One thing that has been notable about grocery prices during the pandemic is that their earnings behavior has been empirically different from the rest of retail. Whereas margins in other retail popped fast, then came back down, grocery margins rose slowly and have stayed stubbornly, uh, stubbornly high. Factors like AV influence substitution towards high margin store brand products may have had some effect during this time, but this is a larger, more persistent shift than I would have expected from just those temporary peripheral factors. Look at this shit, dude. Retail trade margins by subsector, fucking boom. All other retail explodes, dips back, normalizes a little bit, but still rate, it's still rising steadily. Um, whereas food and beverage retail, another massive fucking bump and just continues. Really? Is that gouging? Former Trump chairman of the Council on Economic Advisors twice, Kevin Hassett joins us. Kevin, from what you see and from what's been framed out for us this morning, what will this do? Like for an economist, this is about the most terrifying proposal I've ever seen, because what Kamala Harris is would. saying is that the government needs to set the price of things. And she's starting with food, but I guess if they're going to set the price of food, they might as well set the price of everything else. They've also... Wait, first of all, we do set the price of food, okay? Make no mistake. Whenever someone who is an economist claims that the government doesn't set the price of food, they're lying, okay? Of course we set the price of food. Here's how we set the price of food currently. We set the price of food with farm subsidies and agricultural subsidies. That's number one. We also set the price of food by offering uh, welfare and economic help to those who work at places like f***ing Walmart, okay? These are retailers that get billions of dollars of federal help to adjust their prices adjust their wages as low as physically humanly possible without like literally killing their fucking employees this is simply asking for a return on that okay if you're making an investment it's perfectly valid for you to ask a return on that investment it's ridiculous i think the government should play fast and loose a little bit more i think the government should play hardball a little bit more okay republicans fucking complained about prices as a political talking point over and over again, especially because it was a real problem that a lot of people are experiencing. Kamala Harris acknowledged the problem, said she's going to solve it, and now they're complaining. Now they're complaining that they're, they're, that they're solving the f***ing problem. It's like, what do you want? What the f*** do you want? About You might recall uh, the Biden administration saying that they want to set rents. Uh, that they think rents are too high, so they're going to have the government decide what the rent for your apartment should be. Oh my God, I would not if they did that. That'd be so sick jesus christ they should literally do that holy fuck this is absolute socialism and and it never er ends well if you go back and look at the countries that have tried this like they want not a black person to do it nah it's not that they they want trump to win for that reason as well as other reasons but like it's it's also because like these guys you have to remember there's a higher order than even white supremacy here okay white supremacy is a very powerful motivator but the highest order is still capitalism. That's it. They'll say Vuvuzela is coming. They're going to say the V word. Trust me, it's coming. They're going to say the M word, Maduro. And they're going to say Vuvuzela. Cuba, Venezuela, Ukraine, uh, back when the Soviet Union organized it, then it leads to famine and shortages. And I was just in Lisbon, Portugal, where they still have really a a aggressive rent control. And all of the apartments are empty because the people who own the buildings can't afford to rent them to people because... Dude, talking about former Soviet Republic nations and housing in, in such places is such a funny fucking thing to bring up. They literally have like 80, 90% homeowner uh, rates. It's actually insane to bring that up. Quite literally the exact opposite of the reality that he is mentioning. The rent is so low. And so this is an absolute disaster. Right. This is socialism at its highest. And, and the really chilling thing is that, think about it, it's right before the Democratic... Yeah, Nat I don't know about the Portugal part. I don't know. He just snuck that in there. Social convention. She's the nominee. If you're, if you're under the age of like 45, homeownership rate is nothing, okay? So you think that's laughable. You're like, what? Homeownership rate for who? But in the United States of America, it's still around 65%, something around that. Um, and that is because... Homes used to be affordable, and also there was a lot of help for home ownership in general. There are a lot of things that you could do that make economic sense that help these folks, and it's not just having the government set things. Whenever the government set things, and what happens is that if you're friends with Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris, then they're going to be sure that the prices for your stuff are they're really good, and if there's a shortage, you're going to get it. But if you're an ordinary folk, then you're going to go to the grocery store, and it's going to be kind of like the, the drugstore, where, where you got to go find someone to get you the razor blades because they're behind lock and key. There's going to be shortages, and it's going to be hard to get stuff, and the, and the shelves are going to be empty. Make no mistake, in socialist country, the shelves are empty in the stores, and that's the country right. that Kamala Harris wants to give us. There's something really funny about this 
argument because like we're a capitalist country and that's happening. We are the most capitalist country and that's happening. So I guess it has nothing to do with anything that you're saying. And there's some mythical socialist country. Like you think that's happening in China, bro? So much of this quite literally is pointing to like things that are happening under capitalism and being like, guys, this is positively socialist. Look at all this socialism. It's like, bitch, they're trying to address the problem now. Fixed margins for necessities, including foods, rent, healthcare, nationalized grocery, like the government military commissary, raise the minimum wage, Yim and build housing, bike lanes, and public transit. How good is the standard of life in China? Pretty fucking good, especially if you live in the cities. It's funny because like it didn't used to be, and a lot of people are still operating with like old school attitudes. I don't think people understand like we had a medal drama going on. China tied with us for the number of gold medals at the Olympics. America still won in the overall medal count, but ultimately China tied with the number of gold and we're defeating our asses actually throughout the duration of the Olympics. Very different world that we live in now. Very different world that we live in now. Okay. That's like one silly metric of success. The idea, like when you look at, when you look at like the Chinese education system, when you look at all these other things like social safety and whatnot, there's still issues in China, specifically in terms of healthcare and whatnot. I work at a tattoo shop owned by a Chinese national. My coworker just arrived from Shanghai four months ago. His accounts of his life in China is as far as standard of living make U.S. look like pure shit. He's struggling to adjust because he's finding that none of his basics provided by the Chinese government are in effect here. Yeah, the greatest lie ever told uh, to the American population, I think, is this like false notion that um, Americans, one, don't pay a lot in taxes. Um, what they don't realize is like our government provides nothing. Okay. In comparison to every other country, there are so many things that the government actually makes cost efficient. So many things that the government actually regulates. So many things that governments actually uh, make cheap. Yeah, sure. Like uh, people also people think that they pay fucking significantly more in taxes too. It's not necessarily that they pay significantly more in taxes. Uh, depending on obviously higher earners, they do. Okay. But even as if, even when you live in a place like California, if you're in the top of the mar top margin uh, in the tax bracket, like myself, I'm paying fucking France style taxes. I'm paying Europeans taxes and I get nothing in return for it. I got nothing to show for it because most of that is just still going to America's superiority in the form of military all around the world. It's going to America's military allies. It's great, man. I love it's the sickest. I feel so safe and so good. You want a free market or you don't? People need to explain that. Uh, when they asked, uh, Fox News asked people, who do you trust in the economy? Is still Trump 52, 46, a little bit closer than it was under Joe Biden. When also when she talks about, oh, I'm four for. Ooh, that's scary. Military spending is a small fraction of government spending. Okay, cut it out then. If it's a small fraction, just cut it out. Here's the thing. Here's the other part of this uh, conversation. First of all, discretionary spending, you're absolutely wrong. But as far as overall spending goes, a lot of that goes to social security and social safety nets that exist. But there's another fucking problem here that many people fail to recognize. We do also have an auditing issue in the government, okay? The American government is insanely fucking wealthy. And as, it, as uh, it is insanely fucking wealthy, we dump boatloads into the goddamn private sector to make up for uh, all of these areas, all of these areas that the government is supposed to be taking care of. Okay. Yeah. We have the highest military spending worldwide, but that's not, that's neither here nor there. Okay. The issue is a lot of this stuff is supposed to be handled by the government, but we don't, we are allergic, outright allergic to having the government manage any of this shit. And then we consistently talk about how the government bureaucracy is getting in the way of innovation or government bureaucracy is getting in the way of fucking this or that. All of that stuff is still handled by the private sector. We just dump fucking truckloads of money to the private sector and expect the private sector to fix these problems. And of course, nobody wants to fix the fucking problems, especially when they're literally tied to other private sector interests in order to not solve these problems. The greatest example of this is in like a state like California, where we outsource all of these problems in the state to private sector operatives, and they never actually fucking build additional housing units or build homeless shelters or whatever the fuck. And they just park all those assets. Why? Because on the other side, they're benefiting from completely from the lack of housing supply. It's a much or much higher order of priority for them to ensure that there is no additional housing supply, to ensure that there's no fucking additional shelters or whatever, because that might actually, God forbid, lead to uh, some of the home prices going down. Holy shit, we can't have that. That's one of the biggest issues with the American private-public partnership attitude that we have. Another great example of this is when you look at places like in West Virginia. People in the mountains are not like weird mountain people with a different brain than the rest of the white population. Those are areas that used to have industry. Okay. And at the time, the American government, instead of offering 
services to those people, left it up to the specific sectors to take care of the people. Okay, they even gave him subsidies to take care of those people. So what happened when automation kicked in or what happened when those very same corporations realized that they could extract higher profit margins if they were to move their businesses uh, elsewhere? They created maybe not company towns directly, okay, but something resembling company towns. That's why so much of the public uh, safety nets that would exist in these regions were directly sponsored by the companies, okay? If you go to any Rust Belt town that is now decrepit, Okay, it's basically a fucking ghost town. You will see, like, still General Electric, General Motors, like these brands that no longer exist there. Okay, they, they, the school was sponsored by them. The roads were fucking sponsored by them. All of these towns were basically created because the industry was there. Once they moved out, nothing remains. Nothing remains. These aren't directly company towns in the way that you understand it. Obviously, I'm not talking about like Henry Ford style company towns, but like these were towns created by the companies and then they fucking moved on when they couldn't, when they could get profit elsewhere because they have no responsibility to the citizens in the same way that the government does. They care about one thing and one thing only, which is profit, increasing profit margins at any fucking cost. Another example for Appalachia is Walmart, right? Walmart comes in. Walmart prices out every fucking family owned grocery store. You can't compete with fucking Walmart. Walmart then hires a bunch of people at the lowest possible cost that they can hire people because why else would they, uh, you know, of course they're going to do that. Walmart relies heavily on government subsidies. Once Walmart decides, eh, it's no longer profitable for us to even maintain this fucking store, they fuck off. Now you have eviscerated the entire ecosystem. You just gutted what remained of the grocery stores that were family owned and operated. You came in, you did predatory pricing, you destroyed them, and then you fucked off. So now you have a food desert. You have a massive food desert. What are these people supposed to do? Yeah, here, here it is here. Radiating death. How Walmart displaces nearby small businesses. The closer they are, the more they fall. And then they fuck off. But hey, keep paying attention to like El Salvadorans coming over the fucking border. They're the ones who are robbing you blind, right? Not these fucking guys.